Hello, my name is Amicable Maule and I'll be talking about Newton's laws of motion. So, let us learn how Newton's first law of motion came into picture. The basis of Newton's first law of motion is Galileo's law of inertia. Galileo's law of inertia took birth from Aristotle's law. Galileo's simple but revolutionary ideas dethroned Aristotelian mechanics. After Galileo gave this law of inertia, Newton's first law of motion came into picture. Newton's first law of motion states that a body at rest tends to remain at rest and a body in uniform motion tends to remain in the state of uniform motion until and unless it is acted upon by a net force. So, Newton's first law is all about inertia. Now, Inertia is the tendency of a body to resist a change in its state of rest or motion in a straight line. It describes why an object has the tendency to keep doing what it is doing. For example, a ball is at rest. See, this ball is on the ground and it is not moving. And it will move only when we kick the ball. That is until we apply an external force. Here, a ball is in motion. If a ball is in uniform motion, it will keep moving with the uniform velocity until and unless some external force stops it. So Newton's first law of motion states two things. A stationary object will move only if there is any unbalanced force acting on it. A moving object will change direction or speed only if there is any unbalanced force acting on it. This simply means that things cannot start, stop or change direction all by themselves. It requires some force acting on them from the outside to cause such a change. Now, Newton's second law of motion. Before stating Newton's second law of motion, we should know what is momentum, because momentum plays an important role in Newton's second law of motion. So what is momentum? Momentum of a body is defined to be the product of its mass m and velocity v, and it is denoted by p, that is p is equal to mv. Momentum is clearly a vector quantity, that is, it has both magnitude and direction. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. According to the second law, the force applied is directly proportional to the change of momentum with time, or F is equal to K delta P by delta T, where K is a constant of proportionality. Taking the limit delta T tends to zero, the term delta P by delta T becomes the derivative or differential coefficient of P with respect to T, denoted by dP by dT. Thus, F is equal to K dP by dT. If we consider K is equal to 1, we get F is equal to dP by dT. That is, force is equal to rate of change of momentum. For a body of fixed mass m, F is equal to dP by dT is equal to d dt of mv. Therefore, F is equal to m dv by dt. Therefore, F is equal to ma. So, Newton's second law also states that force is the product of mass and acceleration of the body. For example, let us have a look on these two boxes, that is, a light box and a heavy box. If we apply same force on both the box, that is, if we push the box with same force, we see that the heavy box takes more force to move it than the light box. This is because the heavy box has more mass than the light box. So, the more mass, the force required to push the object is also greater. So, to get more acceleration, we need to apply more force. Now, Newton's third law of motion. It states that to every action, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. When we talk about Newton's third law, 
we talk about action and reaction. So what is action and reaction? Action and reaction are nothing but normal forces. Action and reaction forces occurs at the same instant. There is no cause-effect relation implied in the third law. Action and reaction forces always act on different bodies and not on the same body. So let us consider a pair of bodies A and B. According to the third law, the force exerted by A on B is equal and opposite to the force exerted by B on A. In the first case, the force is exerted on A and in the second case, the force is exerted on B. The action and reaction force cannot act on the same body, they will act on two different body. Thus, if we are considering the motion of any one body A or B, only one of the two force is relevant. For example, jogging. The reason why we are able to jog or walk is the Newton's third law of motion. Every time our feet hit the ground when we are running, the ground hits our feet with an equal and opposite force because when we put our foot on the ground, we are applying a force to it. In doing this, the ground also applies an equal force on our foot in the opposite direction, pushing us forward. As we can see here, the leg, which is in contact with the ground, tries to push the ground back. We apply an action force on the ground, and as a reaction, the ground also applies a reaction force on our body, and hence we move forward. These three laws works in all situations of motion and they are still important for understanding the way things move and represent the foundation of classical mechanics. Thank you.